I'm going to turn this collection of bones here into charcoal in my biochar retort. These are bones that wind up getting put out for the chickens so that they can pick them clean and get all of the remaining meat and the gristle and the fat and the marrow out of these bones. On its second season, it's probably had somewhere in the neighborhood of about 75 batches run through it. The outside chamber is a 55 gallon drum. The inner chamber is a 30 gallon drum and it's starting to show a little bit more wear. There's no loss of integrity as far as the structure itself, but you can see that it's been put through the paces quite well. I've got the inner chamber about 80% filled with the feedstock and there are some bones mixed in through there. I need to leave a bit of head space because there's a, an amount of deformation to the top of this lid so I need it to be able to, to seat down in there properly. But I got a few remaining bones, which I'll go ahead and scatter and put on the top of this. Bone. Yeah, that's that's gonna that's gonna seat just right. Now that I've got the inner chamber centered in the 55 gallon drum, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting my feedstock in and placing it as best I can so that most of all of the space has been filled up. However, it still needs to have uh, a bit of air space so that it will be able to properly burn. All this wood that I picked up today is the perfect size for this type of a configuration because these strips lend themselves very well to filling up the void in between the 30 gallon drum and the 55 gallon drum. I like to put this heavy weight on top of the lid, which just helps to give a little bit better seal so that I can do my best to exclude the contents on the inside of that chamber from getting any oxygen. You need to make sure that all of the voids are filled up. However, you definitely need to have it random enough so that you're getting good airflow through the material. This is a pretty good representation of how I typically load this. And this will give me a really long and clean and hot burn. And then I will just continually raise this up until I get it to the point where I go ahead and put the lid on it. I'll generally use some form of tinder or kindling to get the top started. And in this case, I'm using something else that I obtained from a waste stream. And these are just pallet sheets that I get from a feed store. Once I've lit the top of this, I leave the lid off for a period of time, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 10 minutes. I'll leave, go and do something, then I'll come back. And by then, the top of this is well lit and it's in a free burning state. And I can go ahead and place my lid on at that point and it will begin to really draw that thermal siphon out the top of the stack. I'll set my relief blocks that I put in there. And then as they burn down, this thing will automatically close and then I'll basically be able to walk off and come back and check this the following day. As you can see down here, you can see how that's starting to draw up through the top of that stack. Essentially, I can just walk away. What will happen is that these sticks will burn out and then this thing will automatically shut. Yeah, the noise associated with what you're hearing is all of the activity from the gas being driven out of that inner chamber and then it's reburning on the outside. Well, it's the morning after. Let's let's see what we got. Here's these bones.
here's some more bone. Looks like a ham hock. All this material will be getting crushed down and added back into the compost yard where it will have an opportunity to absorb the nutrients there for months at a time. Here's another, here's another bone. More bone. I'm going to take this material now and crush it and get it back into the compost yard where the chickens will have an opportunity to incorporate this into the piles. They like actually sampling and eating this. It's good for their gut biome, it's good for their digestive health, and it helps to reduce actually their emissions from their manure. So it um, has a lot of beneficial properties, absorbs the odor, so I use it for a bedding material. One of the major reasons why I like to utilize this is just for its ability to increase moisture retention in the soil, plus this is microbial habitat. So all of the microbes that live in the soil will have a place now to call home, a place for all of the microbes to live and to thrive and to multiply. If you can hear that water breaking open all these pore spaces, so this is a very important step in developing this. Started this pile about a dozen or so days ago. Let's see if there's any heat at all in it. Yeah, so it's up around 120 degrees and I've already added one batch of char to this pile. There's char throughout, but I'm going to go ahead and add what I just crushed this morning. All of those bones that were retrieved from these piles are now returning to these piles and the hens are going to get an opportunity to, to work all this in. I'm going to go ahead and let them out. Come on. If you like this sort of content, check out some of our other videos in our biochar playlist. Thanks for watching.